Welcome to the Mystery Mouse Podcast. My name is Holly and I'm coming to you from Colorado where I live with my husband and our five kids and our many pets. And today is Saturday, April 13th. And um, I am really overdue for an episode. So I finally had a day I could sit down and talk to you about my knitting. Um, this is mostly a knitting podcast. There is some crochet today, a little bit of book talk. Um, and some yarn acquisitions uh, and um, some information on my shop. I have a shop update coming up. So I hope that you will stay tuned for all of that. I will start out right away with some finished objects. I finished all three of my wildflower teas. So here they are. And I will talk about each one. This is Ivy's. I can't remember if I had finished this one last time, but I'll just show you again. Here's Ivy's. This is the child size seven, which I modified. I did do another increase here and um, uh, to give her a little more room for her arm depth and also a little bit more width around her body. So this one is Ivy's. Ivy is almost 12, but she is a very tall and skinny person. So that is hers. This is in the... Um, the kits that I did, this is a pattern by Cheryl of Wise Owl Knits. It's a beautiful pattern. This is the child's version, like I said, and uh, this is the Little House in the Prairie kit that I did for um, this knit along. And I love these colors. They're all just very country colors. And this part reminds me of like a gingerbread house. Hmm. I really enjoyed knitting this all three times. <laughs> Here is um, Mary's. This was in um, the adult size three. I think I just did the adult size three. I need to redo the neck. The pattern calls for um, a provisional cast on and um, an I-cord. You pick it back up and do an I-cord edge like you do for the bottom. I did the I-cord edge for the bottom. And it's really pretty, although I think this one needs to be more fully wet blocked so it'll, it won't roll. But it's, it is really pretty. And I just don't like doing provisional cast on. So instead what I did was I picked up stitches. I just picked up the cast on stitches and did two rows of single crochet. And um, I think I just need to go back and like take out the second row and do some decreasing because it's just a little bit like it sticks up a little too much and it needs to go in if that makes sense so but otherwise I think I did this completely to pattern except that I did do a few rows um before I started the cuff of the sleeve I did a few rows you can see if you look really carefully here's where I picked up the stitches so I just did this many rows I think it was the number of rows before I started the color work on the body. That's how many rows I did. And then I did the sleeve in a different color and I edged it with a different color. And also I did, I mean, yeah, it's very detail-y. I, um, so I'm doing one by one rib. And when I changed the purple, I did a row of just knit. And then I bound off in one by one rib so that it wouldn't have those little blips along on the, uh, Whatchamacallit, the pearl stitches. I'm drinking coffee today out of my grandpap's mug. This was his mug. I, I remember him using this a lot when we would like spend the night at their house and stuff. My son Teddy is named Edward after him. So anyway, this is Mary's. This was in, like I said, the adult size three. This is the um, Wizard of Oz kit the colorway. So I, oh, I had so much fun picking out the colors for this. Anyway, that is hers. Mary is 10, but a much more robust um, size than Ivy. And then I just finished mine and I have not yet woven in the ends or worn it out in the world yet, but this is mine. This is in the I, okay, for the size on this one, I started out with the adult size three because I tried Mary's on, fit really good in the shoulders, but I knew I would need more room in the bust. Um, so what I did was I 
cast on the three and then I um I think I added 12 extra stitches around you know like evenly and then when I split for sleeves I put them all in the front because that's where I need the room is in the front so um and you know it's not so many stitches that it looks like the sleeves are heading to the back or anything but they kind of are there's the back so you can see there's just a little extra room in the front but I will wear this next week when I have it all um woven in and everything and also when I figure out what I'm gonna wear with it because I made it really cropped and actually not as cropped as some of my sweaters but I, I like to wear with dresses I like to wear cropped sweaters they just look so much nicer and um more what's the word I'm looking for they look fancier I guess and so here's my I cord bind off on the bottom and I changed up the color work a little bit here I just I wanted well by the time I got to this I, I just had, I had already done this twice, so I just wanted to do something different. So I just changed this up a little bit and I changed my um, body color work up a little bit. It's just a one and then a three, but I kept the middle one in the main color and then a one. And I really, really love it. So this is the little princess colorway. And I also, I have... Well, when I when I wear it next time, I will show you. Hopefully, I'm I might be planning to do something in the middle of all these purple flowers to zhuzh it up a little bit. Now, see when I did my neck, I did the same thing. I did a single crochet around the neck, like two rows. I'm pretty sure it was only two rows. But um, I I did like five, and then I skipped one, you know, so which makes it go in more on the second row and I, it's perfect the way it went in. So that's what I need to do for Mary's. But it was kind of amazing when I got this done, it was kind of like I had only been working on these three sweaters. So I wasn't exactly monogamous, but it was like trinogamous. Uh, but um, it was kind of like, you know how sometimes when you finish a big project and you feel a little bereft, like, what do I do now? That's how I felt a little bit, but just all the same. I'm glad they're done. I really love them. I highly recommend this pattern. It's perfect for the spring and the summer because um, you can wear a little fingering weight uh, short sleeve sweater, you know, all summer if you want to. And so I'm really happy to have those done though. And because it's kind of like, Oh, I can knit anything I want now. It's amazing. Um, so I have been working on a couple of other things. First of all, I picked up, this is in a little bag by Delightful Works. I picked back up these socks that I started last year. I think it was last year. Well, I'm sure it was last year. And um, these are from a sock tube that I bought at the Interweave Yarn Fest last year. And um, I'm making these for my husband, David. And I had done the toe. And then I did the cuff on this one. And you can see, I was trying to do a stretchy cuff because, uh, I mean, this is only 60 stitches. So I usually knit a 72 stitch sock for my husband. I think I had him try the tube on just to make sure his foot would go in it, and it did. So that's fine. But I was worried about the cuff because when you do a toe up, you know, and you have to cast off, sometimes that cast off edge is tight. But then, so then I cast off loosely. I did like a stretchy bind off, and then it looks like this. It's like... So I was not happy with that. I think that's why I put those down. But I went ahead and did the next toe. So when I picked these back up, this toe was like two rows away from being done. And then I had to Kitchener the toe. So I did that. And then I thought, okay, what if I knit a top-down cuff 
and try to Kitchener it around the tube. I don't think I've ever Kitchenered a whole tube before, you know? So I was a little intimidated about that, but I thought, well, I'll just try it. And also I will cast on 72 stitches and then after the ribbing is done, maybe I'll do a plain round and I'll reduce it down to 60. So it will be, you know, hopefully grippy, but still uh, there will be more room there to stretch, you know? So that's what I did. Here's my cuff. And I successfully kitchenered it all the way around. And it looks really nice. You can't tell. Like, I was kind of surprised that <laughs> it worked out so well. Um, so that means I need to knit another cuff and replace this sad thing with this. And I'm just doing this out of a 10 gram mini. And this is how much I have left. So I think what I'll do is I'll just start, um, I'll just start knitting this cuff. And if I run out of yarn, I'll rip out the, the bad one, this one, because I don't know if I'll have enough or not, but this one looks so much better. It looks so, so much better. I'm not worried about it, like not making it over his heel or anything. So hopefully by this by the next episode, I will have finished these two socks and cause I have to do the heels, but I like doing my heels together because I don't always do the same number of rounds before I start decreasing. And it's just, if I try to remember, it's going to be a disaster. I have this much of the sock tube left. So I'll have to see, I don't, I don't know if it's enough for shorties. It might be, but especially if I, uh, knit a, like a longer cuff, maybe. But anyway, I do have that left. They're quite, quite long, these sock tubes. So that is that. And it feels good to be working on this because, uh, I, like I said, I started those socks a long time ago and I feel bad that he's been waiting around for them to be done. Um, also, this is a crochet project. I, um... Actually, this is one of the things I took when we went on our trip to Washington, D.C., which I will put a little montage at the end. I don't know how exciting it will be, but I will put a little montage of our trip to Washington, D.C. from last month. I did make, I made one granny square. I'm going to have to tell you about our trip. It was insane. I made one granny square. I don't know if it was this one, but it's like this. So, I mean, how many rounds is this? One, two, three, four four rounds and then the a round of border and I'm edging them all with this gold <clears throat> that I dyed and then the rest of the colors are just 10 gram minis from my um, subscription to row one yarn so I have quite a nice little stack now uh, I just dropped it so they're all over the place but I have a nice little stack and I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm not going to start putting them together yet because I'm I'm worried that I'm going to run out of this. And I just dyed this like off the cuff, like, oh, sure, one, one will be enough. And I have no idea if it will be or not, but I might have to dye some more. And if I do, it won't match perfectly. And then I'm going to have to mix them up. So I'm just going to crochet all of the squares before I do anything. But I do want to like pick a garment that I want this to fit like, lay them out and kind of see how many I need. It's going to be a cardigan. So I want to see how many I need, you know, before I make a thousand granny squares. Although who knows, it might be a thousand. That would be bad. But anyway, I just wanted to let you know I've been working on that. Um, a lot of what I've been doing is just edging them in the, edging them in the gold. Because here's what they look like. They're so cute. I kind of wish they were this small, but then I really would need a thousand. But anyway... I think I'm almost, I think this might be the last one that is, does not have its edging. So then I'll have to start over and make some more, but that's really, that's such a nice thing to do because it's like you make one and you're like, dun, 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 I did it. At least that's how I feel. And then last night I was so proud of myself, sick of looking at that sock. <laughs> I got the the Kitchener. That Kitchener stitch probably took me two hours to get all the way around that sock tube. So instead of starting the next one, I decided to grab this. Okay, this was in 
this bag, this delightful kitty bag by Delightful Works. And I picked up Mary's Rosella shawl. So you may remember this. This is from a long time ago. It's just a yellow blob right now. This is knit in my uh, Nancy colorway from a long time ago is when I first started my yarn dyeing business. I think I dyed this in, in that first year sometime. And um, it's just like a golden yellow with some hot pink speckles. And um, I had finished, so this is like a long skinny scarf kind of shawl and then it's got a ruffled edge. So I had stopped when I was ready to do the ruffle and then I was like, I'm never going to finish this. So I think I wanted to do it for Christmas and it was just not going to happen. So I have started the ruffle. You can see here where it changes. And there's some yarn overs. That is where the ruffle begins. So I think I've done four or five rows. And of course, it's going to keep increasing for a few. Like every other row, it increases, I think. So right now, I think it's already like 400 stitches, 400 and something and uh, so it's just gonna take forever to get through a row, but it's kind of nice. It's it's not exactly mindless because there's a little bit of a pattern, but it's a easily remember. Rem it's an easily memorizable repeat, so that's really nice. It's perfect TB knitting, and this is a DK yarn, and it's knit on size eight needles. So that in itself is like a nice change because I've been doing all this uh, fingering weight knitting. And this yarn has a uh, silk in it. It's a wool silk blend. And it's just, I don't know, it's really nice. It's just soft and plush. I would love to carry a wool silk blend in my shop, but they are more expensive and I don't know um, how many people would like it. I I don't like seek out wool silk blends when I shop for yarn, but um, it, they're some of my favorite yarns to knit with for sure. So if you would be interested in a wool silk blend, in my shop, just let me know as a as a base, um, because I do love it. So that's Mary's shawl, and um, I have many plans for casting on in the future, which I would like to talk about, but I already have a lot to talk about in this episode. We'll see. Um, okay, I want to do, should I do yarn acquisitions or book talk. I'll do yarn acquisitions. Let's keep it yarny. All right. Um, so I, <laughs> I had a couple of acquisitions I never told you guys about. I don't know why. Uh, I, um, I don't even remember when I got these, but it was this year and I know that I didn't tell you about them. So, um, the first one, is two skeins of yarn I bought from Chicken Lady Fiber Arts. I'll show you the label. I ripped this label off as soon as I got it because I wanted to look at the yarn. I don't usually do that, but I was, I was like wild thing. So anyway, I bought these two skeins. They're on two different bases and I have messed up all of the, the skeins. So this is a uh, DK. I think this is the Amera Americana base. This is her Mau Mau colorway that she did. Um, it's supposed to be like a calico cat, and she donated some of the proceeds from this to um, an animal shelter in her area. So I got a fingering weight. Also, here's the fingering weight. I took it apart. And the reason I bought these is because uh, my husband and I lost our two um, beautiful uh, original pets. Uh, we got these cats two years before our first kid was born. And um, our first kid is now 15, so or he's actually almost 16. So they would have been uh, 18 this year. And... Um, it was, it's, it was kind of strange. I had never lost a pet like that before. Like my parents, um, they, they always had like one cat. I mean, they've had two cats since I was born, you know? 
and neither of those cats really liked me. They were not my pet, you know? So this, we had two cats, they were sisters, Ginger and Pepper. Ginger was my cat and Pepper was David's cat. And we got them at the same time. They were litter mates. And um, uh, so since we got two, like we each took one because we got them when they were kittens. And so we trained them to sit on us and you know, they were very special to us. So uh, we lost our cat Pepper, I think a year in August or I don't know, maybe the year before in August. But then our cat Ginger lived for a while after that and then she passed away. She, we, they think she had maybe a couple kinds of cancer when she was very sick. Um, but anyway, that was just really hard for us because, uh, you know, I'm sure you understand. So anyway, when she had this colorway, I was like, I have to get this. I have to knit um, David a pair of socks. So that's what I'm going to do with the fingering weight. And I'll, I'm sure I'll have some leftover. So maybe I'll do something for myself also. But I wanted to get some DK and maybe make a little stuffy, like a little cat stuffy I could put on my shelf. That would remind me of uh, Ginger. So that is what I'm planning to do with these. And um, I don't know, they're just very sweet. It's a, it's a very sweet thing to do, I guess. Um, and then soon after I bought those, the bag maker had this update. And it's little cats who made their homes in old TVs. I mean, so I thought, okay, well, I can put the socks in the bag <laughs> and they will go together. And thus, thus justifying my purchase of a bag that I really don't need, but love. So um, this bag is for this yarn. I'm sure it will live on after this yarn, isn't it? But anyway, I have, um, so this is from Stolen Minute. Stolen Minutes, I get it wrong every time. And um, let's see, does she have a tag? Oh, here's my other chicken lady label. Um, well, she has her Stolen Minutes on her on this zipper pull. Um, the other reason I had to get this was not just because of the cats, but I have an ancient TV that I refuse to get rid of. Everyone in my family teases me about this. Does anyone else do this? Okay, like we have the regular flat screen TV, whatever. Um, but I have a 1985 Zenith with, uh, you know, the fake wood cabinet thing. It's a tube TV. It still works. It's really not reliable like sometimes um it will go red and everything will be kind of red or um the the sound will crackle, crackle. so I really need to get it fixed but of course there's not a lot of tv repair people lying around anywhere so I don't really know what to do but um but I love it and I won't get rid of it because it was ours growing up and I think someone gave it to my dad like it's kind of a morbid story, but my dad was a pastor. And so like sometimes when people died, they would be like, oh, let's, you know, give all the dead guys clothes to the pastor. <laughs> so this one person, her husband passed away. And so she gave my dad, I think, an overcoat and some of his shoes and also this TV. So I remember like picking it up. I mean, not, not physically, but like going in the car to get it and being all like, wow, a TV. So it was exciting. Um, so that is the story of that bag and why I had to get it. I just, I think I was also having kind of a rough day. I don't know why I feel like I need to justify myself for getting this adorable little bag. I got the littlest one because I was feeling really guilty about buying it, but, um, I think I was having a rough day. <laughs> so, okay. So that's some stuff that I got early in the year. I don't remember when uh, Chicken Lady had that pre-order, but I think it's all done now. Um, okay, so I then in um, February, you know, there's that holiday Valentine's Day. So I asked my husband because Yarn Cafe Creations was having a clear out of, um, a lot of her colorways that she was discontinuing or, you know, 
Um, I think a lot of yarn dyers were doing that around the time, like just like, let's get some new stuff in, let's make room, etc., etc. So she was having a really good sale. And so I said, honey, can you get me some of this yarn? And that will be my uh, Valentine's Day present. And I have ordered yarn cafe creations before. I really like Christie's yarn. And um, I must say though, I was really impressed with her packaging. First of all, I mean, she had this nice box with her logo. Then she had this nice bag with her logo. And then she had each skein wrapped in tissue paper with a sticker. And I was like, wow, that's dedication. Um, so I got, okay, I got DK. I got all the same thing because I'm hoping to make a sweater. So I got three of these. This is called, oh, I can't even remember. Oh, Peach Blossom. I think this is one of her, is it one of her, um, is Peach Blossom? I don't know. Peach Blossom is not a strawberry shortcake thing, is it? I don't think it is, but it might be. I'm not sure. I got three of these. I love her yarn dyeing technique. It is really cool. I really like it. And then I got um, one of these. Now this is orange blossom and I do know that that is a strawberry shortcake person. Just love that. It's so nice and summery. And I got, um, this one's called Sleet. And it's just like a cream or a, like a very pale taupe, <laughs> I don't know, with a lot of brown speckles. I really wanted to get three of this one, but they only had one left. So I got the one. And um, so I am hoping to make a, um, I am hoping to make a soldatna crop with these. I made a soldatna when I was pregnant with Grady because I wanted to wear it to my baby shower and um, I did and I will put a picture in here so you can see what that was like. And I love that sweater. I knit it with um, Knit Picks Gloss DK in I think is it four colors? I think I need one more color, which I will talk to you about in a second. But um, I loved that when I was pregnant, it was perfect. And then when I was not pregnant anymore, it was too short. So for a long time, I thought, okay, I just need to lengthen it. I still have some yarn left. I just need to lengthen it and then I can wear it. I mean, even if it was still cropped, just it was really short. It was above the bump. So... But then I realized it's really a little bit too big, especially in the back for some reason. And I'm not sure what the reason is, but it was kind of wavy in the back. Um, and anyway, I've let Mary have it and she wears it to church a lot. But I need to sort of try it on again, look at the size, figure out like, is the size of my shoulders okay? What did I do that was making it weird in the back? And then, of course, knit it a little longer. I might even knit it more like um, a regular length so that I could wear it with jeans. I need more jeans sweaters, I am realizing. So I have a couple options for the fourth color because for the Soldatna, you need four colors. And since I have three colors or three skeins of the, the main color, I'm hoping that I can get it to a decent length. Um, so we'll see. But let me, let me show you my color options. These are both my hand dyed yarn, but I have two colors that I think could work. First one is this. This is a skein of DK from the Whodunit, uh, the Whodunit colorway from the Whodunit Mal that the two sisters and some yarn put on. And I just had an extra one. So this has a lot of speckles. And in that way, I think it's kind of the same like style as these. And here, let me show you. See this peach blossom has this sort of scummy green in it. And so does the, well, this is peach blossom. This is orange blossom. So I think these would look nice together. I cannot hold four skeins of yarn, can you? So that is the first option. 
The second option is much less speckly, so I don't know how that would be. But there is also this color, especially in the, the peach blossom. And that is this. This is a one-of-a-kind one of color. It's looking more blue. It's really like a, well, it's more of a greeny blue. This color is also in this right here. If you can see that. So, I don't know though. I just don't know if it's too solid looking. Does anyone have an opinion? Anyone? Because it's, I'm just having a hard time deciding. So the, this combination or this, I really do like how this looks on the screen, but if you have, uh, if you have any deep feelings, let me know. And uh, I don't know if I will listen to you, <laughs> but it'll probably tell me which way I'm leaning. Cause sometimes that's what you need. So that is my present for my husband for Valentine's day. So that doesn't count. I did not buy myself that yarn. That was from him. Um, uh, and then yesterday I went to the Interweave Yarn Fest. I was not planning to go. I kept, well, I kept whiffling back and forth. Like, should I go? No, I shouldn't go. I shouldn't buy anything. But I really want to go. I didn't want to miss it. It's a whole year away, you know, blah, blah, blah. So at the end, at the last minute, I decided to go. And I took um, my friend's daughter, who is also Teddy's girlfriend, and we went together and it was really fun. So we got this bag at the door and they were also doing a bead fest. So they had a lot of bead uh, peoples there, which was interesting. I am not a bead people, but it was fun to look at. And I bought two, well, two things. I mean, it was more than two things, but it was two projects worth of things. So from Sun Valley Fibers, I always try to get something from Sun Valley Fibers because they're really nice and they have beautiful yarn. And they did the yarn that I uh, did for my fingering weight uh, faux set, the, the mini skeins, not the main skein. But I bought this. So this is another one of those um, like gradient kits. And um, it, the, the kit itself does not have a name. But here are the here are the names of the colorways, and you can see the fiber content. It's an MCN fingering, and uh, 130 yards per skein. And so um, I was talking about it with the the lady who dyes this yarn, and she was saying basically three. Uh, three of these little minis are one skein. So it's more like 30 grams. So they're pretty big, um, really. And then I thought, well, I want to make something with, you know, with all of these. So I bought these two. This colorway is called Strut Your Stuff, I think. And it's a little greener. I don't know why everything's showing up so blue. That's just the way it is. But I thought these looked really nice together. They're very autumnal, I know, but that's my favorite time. So I think I'm just sort of longing for that with my yarn. And this is the same base, the MCN. 80% merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, 400 yards. And I might make um, a colorwork vest with these. I was thinking about trying to eke out a color work sweater but there is in that color work bible book there is a really really nice color work vest that has this many colors like the main skein and six contrast colors so I was looking at that and I was like hmm I might have to do that so I will put a picture of that here so you can see what that looks like I think this would be just beautiful um, so that was one thing that I got. And then I went to a, a new to me yarn dyer in, um, they're from Arizona. Well, originally I was talking to the, the husband. He said they're originally there from the UK, but they've been in Arizona for like 16 years. And the name of their booth was Storytellers Stitchery. And I bought these two yarns. And um, 
all, since it's storyteller, they're all like very book themed. That's why I had to get these because they're from her Beatrix Potter collection. This is Jemima Puddle Duck and this is Benjamin Bunny. And I, I got DK and I thought these would be a beautiful cowl or something. I think I'm having a moment with this color. <laughs> this is almost exactly the color of my my sweater. It's a little bit darker. But oh, it's just so refined. I don't know. I just like it. And um and then I did get one other thing. And that was this bag from A Needle Runs Through It. Um, and they, I have gotten stuff from them, I think, online. They do a lot of this uh, wood burn, uh, wood thing. You know, this, you know what I'm saying. They have a lot of these. They have, like, uh, you can get, like, stitch markers and uh, all kinds of stuff. But they do a lot of this. But anyway, evidently, they do bags. This is a little box bag. And uh, it's so cute. They had ones that were littler than this, and I got the second size up. And um, it just opens like this. It's very roomy. So I think this would be perfect for like. I mean, I think you could you could do a sock project in here, but you could I think you could do a two skein project in this little bag. So it's so cute, and it's obviously it's books. And so, and I love these colors too. I love this sort of like navy and jewel tones. So, you know, sometimes when people have your number, you're like, what are you trying to do to me? But I love it. So I think that's all my acquisitions. It feels like a lot, but it's like for the last three months. So, um, okay right it's not too much it's not excessive um okay so I'm gonna have a very brief book talk mostly I'm just gonna tell you what I've been reading I finished all the shoe books so I was like I need another cozy series but I was like I should read something new that would be amazing so or at least new to me you know so I read all creatures great and small because I have all four of those books and so I read the first one. I loved it. I cried at the ending, not because it was sad, but just because it was like, oh, so good. And um, I don't know. I loved it. So now I'm reading the second one. I brought it over here. Where did it go? I'm sorry. I lost the first one immediately as soon as I was done reading it. But here's the second one. All things bright and beautiful. And I all the ones I have are like this paperback version. I just they're so soppy about this the sequel to all creatures great and small the most lovable number one bestseller of the decade and then they're like love is wonderful the second time around which was a song in case you didn't know but uh it's just like wow so much love and it's just it's veterinary stories right i mean he does talk a lot about people too but it's mostly like you know i had to put my arm inside this cow to get the calf out kind of cracks me up. They're like, so much love. But I am really enjoying it. I'm here. You can see where my little, I'm a page putter downer. I am a dog ear. I dog ear my pages. It's the only way. Um, so that's what I'm reading right now. And I went to the thrift store and I got a few books. I got some kids books. I got that book, Extra Yarn which is a picture book, uh, which I've been resisting buying new because it's hardback and it's like $20 or who knows, maybe more than that. But I got this at the thrift store. Mr. Blandings builds his dream house. Before we had kids, um, David and I used to uh, clean our house and then watch this movie <laughs> because neither of us like to clean. And so we would, um, you know, we would force ourselves to clean the house. And then we would sit down and watch this movie with Cary Grant and Myrna Loy and probably some other famous people. I don't remember. But um, so I was so excited when I saw this. It's so cute. Mr. Blandings builds his dream house. And um, I've never read the book. 
So I'm really interested to see how it is the same and how it is different because that's what you do when you, there's a movie book competition going. And um, it's got these cute little, <laughs> it's cute little illustrations. It's, uh, it just looks really fun. So I'm really looking forward to reading that <sighs> sometime when I can. So that's all my book talk. That's it. Uh, oh, I will say um, what I'm watching. I started watching Leverage, which is a show from the early, not the early 2000s, but like 2008, 2009 it started. Um, and because Emily of Woldenburn was saying that in one of her recent episodes that she uh, loves that show. It's like a comfort show for her. And so I was like, okay, I'll try it because Emily and I like all the same things. And, um, so, and of course I love it. It's ridiculous. It's like, uh, like a heist show, but it so reminds me of the A-Team, which I love the A-Team, which is also very corny, but from the eighties. And, um, so Emily, if you haven't seen the A-Team, very much less high tech <laughs> than leverage, but um, that same sort of um, kind of <sighs> on the other side of the law, but the good guys just trying to help people out. It's that very much that same feel. So highly recommend. I, one of the reasons I love the A team is because um, you know they have all this like uh, cars getting blown up or like you know, veering wildly into the air and exploding and it, well, not exploding, but you know, they, they would roll over and then you see the bad guys crawl out unharmed, completely fine because they couldn't like have people die on TV in the eighties or I guess not in the same way. Unlike in a movie where it's just like people are horribly killed, but, um, that always cracked me up <laughs> watching these horrible car crashes and everything. And then the bad guys are all crawling away. Anyway, so sometimes you just need a little bit of that. Um, what else was I going to say? So now I need to talk about my shop update. I'm going to have a shop update on Saturday, April 20th at 11 a.m. Eastern. I got to remember that. That's nine o'clock my time. Okay, so I am going to have a... Uh, some a new yarn collection up for pre-order and I'm going to have a Mother's Day uh, sock set and a stitch marker uh, up for pre-order and I'm going to have my advent calendar. Um, so I am really hoping that you will check out the, uh, the update. Let me show you my new collection that I am launching. Okay. I am launching a Charlotte's Web collection for this late spring, early summer time. And so there are, what, five colors? So first we have Wilbur. This is a very radiant pe peachy pink. Um, some gold. This is Wilbur. And I will be putting these up as a pre-order because I am all out of fingering weight yarn and I need to order some more. So this will be a pre-order, but hopefully as soon as you order, I will be able to dye up the yarn and get it out to you very quickly. So this is Radiant Wilbur. Then I have Charlotte. This is kind of a gray with pink and purple and blue in it. It's really a subtle, but, um, how would you call this? More complicated than it appears to be color, which I think is perfect for Charlotte. It's her character. This is Zuckerman. This is his farm and his barn and all of the animals. It is a red and brown, some pink, it's 
really, really pretty. I have fern. Ooh, this is not quite as electric. Well, almost. This is a, a very pale aqua with some turquoise bits. This is fern. It's a very sweet girl. The fair. So there are little, little speckles of red and blue and gold. And it's just kind of a very light tan. That is the fair. So that's my Charlotte's Web collection. I think they look beautiful together. I'll try to show you. It's five. Five yarns. Can we do it? I'll just smoosh them. So here they are together. I just think these are so nice for the spring. And I hope you will check them out. And I will have these, um, I will put for the pre-order, I will put them up for um, fingering DK and tweed DK. Um, like I said, if you're interested in a wool silk blend, this would be a great time to let me know because I would love to see those, see these in that color, in these colors. Um, but um, don't forget, if you want to order three skeins or more, then you can... Um, check out the sweater quantities. I'll put the colors in there. You just need to choose the colorway and the base. And um, you can get a slight discount on um, for ordering a sweater's quantity of the same color. Okay, so that is my new collection. I'm really excited about it. I, it took me a long time to kind of think up what exactly I wanted to do, so I'm so glad I got all that figured out. Um, next I am offering a Mother's Day kit. It's going to be a sock set with a main skein and two mini skeins and a hand beaded stitch marker made by my friend Elizabeth. So, um, that is a surprise sock set. So I will put the inspiration photo up here. And this is my, one of my mom's teacups. My mom collects teacups. So each year I'm doing, um, a set inspired by one of her teacups. So, so this is the teacup for 2024 and I will be dying that up after I get all the pre-orders and those will be going out on May 1st. So if you want the Mother's Day uh, kit, please order between um, April 20th and like as, you know, as close to April 20th as you can because uh, I will be dying those up and so that they're ready to go by May 1st. Um, and that would be great if you want to buy a present for a mom in your life, your mom, or if you want uh, your kids to buy you a Mother's Day gift, you can always ask them for that. Um, I think it's gonna be really fun. So uh, that is the Mother's Day kit. And then the big one, my advent calendar, it is time to announce my 2024 advent calendar. I'm so excited. So this year's advent calendar is Christmas in Cabot Cove, a Murder, She Wrote inspired yarn advent calendar. Um, I know many of you out there are Murder, She Wrote fans, as am I. As you may know, I love Angela Lansbury. I love um, the character she's created in her acting career. And um, so I I have been wanting to do this <laughs> for a long time. Um, so I'm, I'm really, really excited. This will be just like my other advent calendars. It will be 12 20 gram fingering weight mini skeins one full skein, which you can save for Christmas day, if that's what you want to do. Um, some kind of a pattern, which I will put together, um, stitch markers, goodies, something for every day. And, um, I hope that it will be a super fun and exciting part of your Christmas. 
I'm hoping kind of like I did last year with the um and the year before that each colorway name will be like a clue and you can try to figure out with me what um I don't know what the mystery is um I will be I will be doing it from uh different shows and in the artist she wrote collective so I hope that you will um you fans out there will really enjoy it and just get a kick out of it. Um, that will go on sale this Saturday, April 20th at 11 a.m. There will be a limited number of uh, the admins available. If I sell out, especially if it sells out really quickly, I will be putting up more later in the year. But if you wanna be sure to get one now, this is the best time to go for it. So. Um, I know that it's early, but I know I've seen several other yarn dyers already put their advent calendar up and, um, I think it just gets a little earlier every year. Sometimes right after the new year, I think some yarn dyers start. Um, I hope you will check it out if you are a Murder, She Wrote fan, because I think you're going to love it. I will leave you now and I am going to put in a little montage from my trip. So this was about a month ago now. We went to Washington, D.C. Um, I will just say I was sick on the way there on the airplane. And after we were on the airplane and in the rental car, I have never been so sick in my entire life. Uh, because it was right after the time change. And I think what it was, I was just exhausted. I was... Um, we we got like three hours of sleep the night before and you know, we lost an hour and it was just uh i don't know i think that just does something to me <laughs> when i travel so that was not fun so i had to like i had to like um kind of recover from that for a couple days but we really enjoyed it we went with some of our friends david my husband is um goes to a conference every year in washington dc and uh, it's a pastor's conference and he and other pastors go to the Capitol, they go into the legislator's offices and they um, usually have a presentation for them of uh, some kind of book. And then they, um, they ask them if they can pray with them or pray with the people in their office because a lot of times um, it's really difficult to get in to see the actual legislator and we end up talking to their aides. And so, um, so we went with them for uh, a couple of, well, we went with them on Tuesday to do that. And so we got to trek around the offices and all the cafes and the offices and all of that. And then we um, we had uh, services in the evening. And then after, after Wednesday evening, all that was done. And we did some sightseeing on Thursday and then we left on Friday. So... Um, it was a very busy and full trip, but it was really fun. And it was the first time our kids have been able to go. And like I said, our friends went with us. And so that was really fun. So I will put a montage of pictures in here and I will see you next time.